Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show that's name doesn't make sense, even if you think about it. I am Brandy, Mr. Headache, and I used to be an aspiring Xemorph main until the fog took me. And as always, I am joined by my lovely co-host, Levi Ghost Anonymous. Hello, everybody. How's it going? About as good as it can be being in a afterlife slash purgatory. So yeah. Levi and I used to be aspiring Dead by Daylight streamers until the entity decided to put an end to that. And now we are locked in the confines of Greenville's Theater, where we must run a dinky late night talk show to farm the emotions of not only our guests, but you, the viewing audience. Ahead of time, I thank you for your participation. Plenty of times, iconic Dead by Daylight personalities go awry and just need something off their chest. A perk rubbing you the wrong way? Need to vent about it? Late night by daylight. Recent update got you down and you gotta let somebody know? Late night by daylight. Just want to complain for absolutely no reason at all? Well, you know what comes next. Late night, night by, by daylight. daylight. Are you ready for the show, Levi? Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I'm afraid to say no because I'm not sure what the entity will do to me. I, I'm afraid it'll throw me into the void or something. We know how about how DVD players feel about the void, so I think it's best we move on. I mean, we could just end up being general perk teachables at some point, so that's pretty cool, I guess. That, that is kind of cool. What I do think is really neat is that we had a fairly sizable update recently with a almost like a diet perk shakeup. How do you have any feelings about that? Yeah, there, there's a lot going on. I mean, uh, players are just recently complaining about uh, slugging being new to the meta, and we just got like a huge buff to an anti-slugging perk. Um, so I'm excited to see how that goes. We got quite a quite a lot of good changes in there. Um, some scary stuff um, for one side and the other, and it, it'll it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Honestly, there's some very interesting shakeups. Is there anything you surprised made it from the PTB to live that you didn't think would come in its current form? Um, quick gambit to a little bit to like a to an extent. I think it's it, it it's a weird perk that I feel like really hinders m1 killers that kind of already had a hard time securing that first hit but now like you could just kind of pre-drop pallets and extend that beginning of the chase and you get a lot of benefit for it so it just further separates the gap between m1 and m2 killers so i'm a little surprised um we're gonna live forever i think was already an underrated perk uh so that one's also kind of interesting to see um yeah those those are very interesting zenshin i'm glad didn't make it the way it was in ptb so i'm i'm overall i'm pretty happy with the changes we got not too too surprised infinite or reading a down pounce that's not a bad thing at all you know yeah, yeah, yeah no. i mean arguably six seconds or i think it's six seconds it's still pretty strong especially paired with lethal it might as well be permanent um it's it's kind of scary so it's, it's pretty good yeah, a lot of big changes and a lot of big things in Dead by Daylight. It is a game that is uh, very, um, what's the word? Very, it's always changing. Always a change. It's never a solid game. It's always day to day, changing bit by bit. But we're not here to talk about balance, at least not in this segment. <laughs> and we do have <laughs> other segments to get to. So the show must go on. So first, we have to have a word of the day from our friend Eric the Crow. Hello, everyone. It is my pleasure to introduce Late Night by Daylight's resident mascot, Eric the Crow. You see, Eric lives up here in this ceiling hole up behind me. He comes down sometimes. Problem is, he's not really a people person. Honestly, relatable. But he's also very wise, so Eric is going to be bringing us our word of the day. So, Eric, now that I'm done monologuing, what is our word of the day? What's that? Ah, tunneling. Oh, that's a good one. One that gets community quite up in arms, huh? What does tunneling mean there, bud? Hmm, I see. Tunneling is the act of ignoring other survivors and objectives to instead target the last hook survivor until they are sacrificed. You see, what's weird about that, Eric, is I've heard that even if you hook another survivor and come back to the previous survivor, that's also tunneling. Is that true? No? Wow. That's crazy. Some people even say as long as DS is active, it's still tunneling. Is that true? No? What? <laughs> no way. Okay, okay, okay. What if, what if, hear me out. What if the unhooked survivor body blocks the killer and forces them to chase them? Is that, is that not tunneling either? Well, wow. I've, I guess I've just been wrong this whole time. Thanks, Eric. I really appreciate it. What do you mean I'm being facetious? I'd never do that. 
Well, thanks for joining Eric the Crow and I for our word of the day. Say goodbye, Eric. Uh, well, never mind with that. But anyways, back to the show. All right, some very, very insightful words from our friend Eric the Crow, as always. But we have to get to the meat and potatoes of our show. It is finally time to interview our first guest ever for Late Night by Daylight, which is... No one. Um, Levi, did we get a guest for the first episode? Uh, you know, it's a very complicated uh, answer, but no, no, uh, no, to put it simply, no, uh, we, we, uh, we did not. Um, so this is a talk show where we talk to our guests and we hey. didn't get a guest for the talk show. Yeah, they, they kind of got tunneled out before I could get them here. Uh, it's, it, things happen. Um. I mean, it, you know, we, 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 I mean, we, we, we used to stream. We both have had scuff streams. We, we can deal with this. It, it, it'll be okay, I'm sure. Maybe. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess it's fair. I mean, we're not really prepared. Um. So, like, we're dead by daylight personalities, or at least we used to be until the fog took us. So that like kind of counts, right? I, I mean, it, it counts more than I can. Yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Well, I was thinking maybe, you know, you've had talks about Dead by Daylight before and your specific kind of like experiences. So maybe I can interview you, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what? In in, uh, in, in effort of saving our image, I'm going to go ahead and say that's a fantastic idea. And that's exactly what we had planned all along. Okay. Well, um, I'm not going to have you switch seats. Uh, to sit over the, the dinky desk over there. Uh, you can stay at your... What, what exactly is that thing over there? Like, I know I'm, like, the front counter that sells the, the goop. Are you just, like, the like the, the supplies? Like, that yeah. that section of Taco Bell with all the napkins and the sauces? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, the, the, the It was this or the dinky seat, and uh, it, I chose this. I chose this. I'll take it. All right. When you're in the entity's realm, you, you take what you can get. Which is often very little, if not nothing. Pretty much. All right, so, all right, with that... <laughs> um. I guess we'll roll this as if you were, you know, our actual guest guest. So what can we refer to you as uh, Levi Ghost Anonymous? How would you introduce yourself to someone if you're introducing yourself to them for the first time? Yeah, my name is Levi. You can call me Ghost, Ghost Anonymous, Ghost Anonymous, whatever fits your fancy. I go by he, him. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm a Chucky man. I'd like to have a lot of fun. I dance on stream uh, for other people's enjoyment and just kind of like to hang out and have a good time, try to improve at things and have a just a huge focus on self-improvement as a whole that, that, that sounds healthy um, <laughs> um <laughs> if there, is there anything that you would like to promote today before we get started yeah um i just recently did a the very first video in a new series uh we we're calling it the killer summits i sit down with a bunch of trickster mains we broke down their character objectively as objectively as we could anyways uh and sounds gave them like a new misery. miracle it, it was it was it's a three hour video so it's more like a podcast um uh but yeah it's something i'm doing with a lot of the killers i mean spoiler alert we're doing xeno next episode uh you're on it yourself uh so yeah yeah so you can go check it out i'm sure links will be somewhere where the entity put link. this is the last sure. thing i did before they took me <laughs> <laughs> all right so in terms of you and i um the main thing with this uh, late night by daylight is we're trying to offer this as a space to you know just vent about anything that's been on your mind whether it be the game the community etc and if we have for any reason have to bring up other creators unless we're uniquely talking about them positively uh you know do it anonymously if you're going to be upset about something um but i know you and i in particular have talked about kind of an era where things seem to be more sunshine and rainbows and where it's a little bit more easy breezy for you. But after a while, you kind of started having an era where there was like a, a wall, a kind of like a plateau you hit, and there was a lot of frustration with that. So could you go over that in your own perspective for the people at home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to set some background, um, I, I've been playing DVD since uh, 2020. Um, I played the game really passively for a long while, um, about about two years ago i started playing it more seriously started streaming it um and really didn't have many troubles i have dance alerts um drop the controller drop chase alerts uh, or redeems um so i'd be playing games pretty regularly where i'd be away from the controller or keyboard mouse whatever you prefer 
for up to three minutes a match and i was still generating like a 95 percent win rate um most nights we really would go multiple days without losses um and i kind of chalked it up to my fighting game background uh just having a good handle on like just general game mechanics and pressure um and it would it had been going fine for a very long time almost the year and a half pretty much maintained uh at low points sometimes i mean we all have dips maybe a 80 percent 70 percent win rate huh i'm a dip oh yeah uh, aren't we all truly i mean we're all sitting here playing an eight-year-old game i think we could all be determined to be dips if i'm <laughs> honest <laughs> but yeah yeah just um it just it, the a good win rate just having a, like i was able to kind of sit back relax like you said sunshine um and then out of nowhere i hit a plateau and it's it's not like i'm playing perkless trapper though I do love me a good perkless trapper uh I, i'm a chucky main and i just realized some days um and not not just like i know some people say they have a bad day here and there um i think that's pretty normal but i was having bad days like three to four times a week um so it's more often a bad day than a good day and, and this lasted for months where I had games I couldn't get too hooked. I couldn't put together what was going on. It was like nothing connected. It, it was like being in a haze or um, there just nothing, just nothing was working. And I couldn't quite figure it out. I tried a few different things. I tried taking a break from Dead by Daylight. That didn't seem to work too much. In fact, when I got back, I was even rustier and having even a much harder time working with it, which usually that's a good way to go about it. Um, I tried taking a break from the character I was maining, um, which did work a little bit. Whenever I'd play somebody I wasn't used to, I think my conscious would, conscious mind would kind of take a back seat and my subconscious would just kind of chill and play, not to mention my MMR would be a little lower. Um, but yeah, I really hit a wall um, and I struggled with that. I, I talked to about numerous friends, you included, trying to find answers and flounder. And we went through a lot. We went through a lot of suggestions. Yeah, I mean, we looked at in-game stuff, like uh, maybe we hit a new uh, MMR bracket. Um, maybe it was life stuff. You know, we all have a lot of going on in life. I had recently been through some stuff, so we looked at that as a possibility. Um, I, I literally tried everything. I tried changing my sleep schedule, getting more sleep. I changed my diet. I tried changing um, how my streams were. I took away some of the redeems, so there wasn't so much pressure. Um, I, I used to always play with like a 12 hook no tunneling very nice guy type of attitude and i kind of even changed it to cutthroat and that is still nothing helped um it wasn't until i did the inverse of the smart thing oddly enough um i think after everybody told me to take a break just take distance i had tried that for three months and it obviously wasn't getting anywhere so i figured the only thing left was to uh hit the brick wall um yeah it was uh quite an interesting decision i i had realized that i was having a really hard time on specific maps and specific situations and instead of trying to hide away from my weaknesses i wanted to really lean into them so i loaded up my killer uh and for the last month or so almost a month just under i've been playing completely perkless and have purposely been signing myself to my least liked maps the ones i struggle on the most um and it's been working actually i think uh the last the, the first week i did it was really rough um Lots of lots of really hard matches. Lots of teabagging at the exit gates. Lots of uh, BMing. Lots of uh, e GG easies in the end game chat. But uh, here I am a few weeks later, and I think my win rate is back to around ninety something percent. And I've been running perkless ever since, um, going to pretty much any map. So leaning into what I was finding hard, and instead instead of shying away from it, it really ended up helping out quite a bit. I think when a lot of players are at that wall where they're not sure what to do, they take a lot of different directions with that, whether that be, you know, the game is in a bad space or um, maybe my character is in a bad space. But a lot of people don't do what you did where they look and see, well, if I'm consistently losing on this map, maybe I should go to this map a lot. Maybe if I'm losing against specific perks, I should practice against these to try and see if I can overcome these with practice. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, I think it's easy when you're playing a game um, and you don't already come from like a competitive background in gaming to kind of blame the things around you. And I think we do that in life. It's just a lot easier than looking inward. Um, and I even I'm still guilty of it a lot of times. It's a lot easier to be like, oh, well, that perks unbalanced or 
this map's not fair um and those are definitely all true things dead by daylight is not the most balanced game in the world there's definitely a lot of imbalances and if if one side really really wants to win uh they probably can if they bring the right stuff um but at the end of the day you'll never have control over that um and i think you gotta all you can control is your own input um so that's kind of what you got to focus on and a lot of times when i make the decision of a uh, trying to figure out if it's a me or a game issue i look at other players um that tends to go a long way like is it just me struggling with this thing or are there other players coming across it and doing just fine so i tend to do some research look around and be like okay well well these players aren't struggling with this at all so obviously there's an answer and they have it they might not know what it is but they have it i just need to figure out what that is um and that's kind of the approach i try to take before i really start digging down even further i feel like because dead by daylight is such a space where there's so much naturally stacked against you like poorly designed maps poorly designed perks um that even if something as simple as like comms versus not comms can create such a big difference that it's just so much of what defines victory in the game is kind of up in the air and truly rng but i feel like it kind of is a double-edged sword because some people take oh well most of the game is rng so it doesn't matter if I lose because everything is just kind of up in the air. A lot of people take it the opposite direction in a negative perspective of like, everything's RNG, so everything is the game's fault and there's no point, which is far more nihilistic. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I, I think you're right. And there's, I, I understand that mentality. I think I think we've all been there in this game where, because RNG can definitely sway games and take things out of your hand That's that's been there, but I, I don't know, I we, we see, people with streaks of like a thousand games and granted it's on like blights and nurses but there's other people's streaks of hundreds of games so obviously there's stuff you can do they're definitely playing cutthroat i'm sure in a lot of those streaks but i don't know at the end of the day i always feel like there's something i can do even if i it doesn't guarantee me a win um i, I guess it really boils down to what you consider a win are you really going after just straight up winning or like is there another goal and i think having a goal of like getting better or even getting better at something specific is probably the better win con to keep in mind. Um, just going straight for wins, I don't really think that's the most intelligent way to go about it. Because like like we've said, you, you there's a lot you can control. There's definitely a lot of RNG and it's definitely still somewhat in your hands. But if that's all you're going for, you're just inevitably going to be disappointed. I feel like it's almost like putting the cart before the horse. You know, because you want wins and you, you're if yeah, you're very definitely. like win forward, you want to just chase wins as much as possible. That's why you'll see a lot of people who aren't necessarily the best at the game yet who are really wanting wins. They'll do stuff like no ed because it's just just easy, right? Just suddenly at the end game, I just get exposed downs. and It's pretty great. <laughs> and it helps me get extra sacrifices. But are you truly actually improving at the game? No, not really. So a lot of people prioritize the result over the expertise and skill it will take to consistently get those results, even against more challenging players. Yeah, uh, I mean, it goes into that kills equals skills debate a little bit, right? Um, where Dead by Daylight has this unique issue where sometimes skillful and good play doesn't always lead to victories. So like a win isn't always a win, if that makes sense. Like you, you can... I mean, if you wanted to back in the day, you just wanted to win a game, uh, you could just boot up for your first time and face camp as Bubba and get get some easy kills. Um, it, it really wasn't that hard. You could body block with twins. I mean, we've, we've seen lots of examples. Um, so yeah, it's it, it, Dead by Daylight's in a very unique situation with something like that. I could, sure. not, I could not tell you how many people I knew who like their whole shtick was like, I'm a face camping Bubba. <laughs> which is not possible anymore because of the anti cam meter <laughs> but or not not possible but you know a little bit more difficult but so many people that i knew that that was their whole spiel that was their whole shtick was to do that took long breaks from the game after the anti cam meter got put in because like their whole that, that's all they knew how to do like that 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 was it me hook somebody me stand in front he he i'm a, I'm a, I'm a troll haha but then once that was gone like they couldn't adapt because like all they knew how to do was quite literally stand there and press M2. <laughs> yeah, I think we're we're in this renaissance of Dead by Daylight right now. Um, I mean, Dead by Daylight has never been a balanced game. I think this is close to the most balanced it's ever been. Um, we still have some issues, glaring issues, but the game has always had insane things in it. Uh, Mori's used to be crazy. Hatch, 
uh, used to be egregious. You would just lose because reasons. Um, and I think a lot of older players um, kind of miss that. Like you could kind of bully on either side, right? There were some, uh, what's a good word for it? Underhanded tactics you could take to get wins and do some mm -hmm. nasty kind of things. And I think a lot of players are kind of missing that because a lot of that's being removed. Um, and the game, like you can't, you can't just pre-drop and hold W anymore, right? On the survivor side and as killer, you can't just face camp either. Um, and I think some players just want to go back to Bully Simulator 3000. Um, and it's just slowly going away. And we're kind of seeing that trend of people saying, oh, I miss old Dead by Daylight. Because, um, yeah, you, you actually kind of have to kind of learn the game a little bit more recently. With your specific situation where you had like a long period where you weren't enjoying the game because it felt like you couldn't get the results you wanted and you turn it around through hard work and practice, do you feel like you're finally in a space where you enjoy the game again? Because it's something that like the people at home obviously deal with a lot is like getting into ruts of burnout and a lot of it has to do with not achieving the the, the stat results that they want. Yeah, it was, um, I mean, I enjoy DVD now and I think that was kind of, honestly, that was the most frustrating thing about it is I wasn't, when I was going through this rut, I was very demo demoralized, demotivated, um, and just upset. I mean, I play DVDs kind of part for stream, but and I, I, but when it's something you're putting your free time into it and it's not going well, it's very hard. But I didn't not like the game. And I think that was the hard part is a lot of people would tell me, oh, you're burnt out. And maybe that was part of it, sure. But I actively did want to play DVD and I actively was having fun in the grand scheme of things. Um, like I still enjoy the themes. I still enjoy playing with, you know, my little guy. I like, I, I liked Dead by Daylight. I, bleh, I liked Dead by Daylight through and through still. I still wanted to play. It wasn't like I wanted to be away from it and just felt forced to play. I just couldn't. It was like the uh, the synapse in my brain just weren't connecting. But I, I actively enjoyed it. But I am having a lot more fun. I am at a point again where I can dance mid-game sometimes. I might not still win and get my 4Ks like I used to be able to. I think I'm definitely at a higher MMR now. Um... But I, I'm definitely able to relax and not be so frustrated. Um, and I can think a little bit more clearly. It's so funny. It's kind of it's 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 kind of like an air bubble where the harder you try to push, the more it moves around. Um, but the moment you kind of just relax, it just kind of hangs out in place and isn't a problem anymore. Um, and I'm definitely in that kind of more zen state where I can just kind of get into the swing of things. And most most of my matches are just kind of nice and chill and I can have a good laugh throughout. When I get palettes done, I'm like, ooh. Nice palette stun. You know, I get blinded from a crazy angle. Like, dang, I can't believe they had got that angle. That's insane. Way to go. Whereas before, I noticed myself being like, oh my god, that's so broken. That's so stupid. They need to take this out. They need to do that. You know, um, I can. I'm back in a spot where I feel like I can kind of appreciate the other players' input in their skill, which was kind of hard to do when I was so frustrated. I think uh, it, th there's like two walks of thought that this expresses itself in the Dead by Daylight community is there's a lot of us that like will experience frustration or agitation or annoyance with certain things in the game. But like, you know, you I know you love Elden Ring like <laughs> above yeah. and beyond. But that's definitely a perfect example of a game where like being frustrated as part of the experience going, gosh, that attacks oh, yeah. PS. Gosh, I hate that. And then like overcoming that is part of the experience and part of the ultimate fun of coming out on the back end but like that kind of gets lost in the shuffle in the community because the the dead by daylight content creation sphere has a lot of examples of people that play far past the point of enjoyment and it's just kind of like a um communal outcry for people to you know pump the brakes or to exit the game entirely because people do have this problem with stopping so it's kind of like people almost like alarm bells start triggering when they see that level of frustration, even if it's like a healthy part of the journey felt uh, frustration. Yeah, it, that's that's actually a really good point. I've, 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 I've tried to talk about that myself. I think, I mean, streaming is not new, right? And I think there's a lot of sensational, sensationalism behind streamers getting upset and raging. We see it all the time, right? Like we've seen, I won't name any creators, but that kind of go off the deep end, you know, throw smash keyboards. Um, and there's definitely unhealthy frustration. But like you said, with like Elden Ring and stuff, sometimes the fun is that frustration. And uh, I, I mean, I see it in your stream. I definitely do it in my stream where I'll vocalize it, right? And I'm doing that one for education. So people kind of know where I'm coming from and what I'm thinking about. Um, and two, it's, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a puzzle, right? Like the first time you try to solve a Rubik's Cube, if you don't have all the algorithms in place, like it's, 
it's gonna be frustrating and eventually when you solve it it's a, it's a really cathartic and real like that that sense of relief and accomplishment is really strong and that's what that is fun it's a healthy level of frustration not one where i'm like raging and my blood pressure is going i'm just like ah oh, crap like how do i deal with this problem in front of me like the, the i have this puzzle like this loop right this survivor running main in this way and i don't know how to counter it and it's frustrating the crap out of me but i kind of love it because they're teaching me something and there's something to learn here there is something i can do i just got to figure it out and i think that's totally healthy um but trying to differentiate between that kind of frustration and the unhealthy rage is definitely not something i think a lot of people are used to figuring out like or even putting into two different groups do you feel like there are players in the community that confuse the two? Like there are people that are going through like the intense suffering, the the rigorous um, annoyance and frustration, and they confuse it with something that they think is going to lighten up. Like they think they'll come out on the other side, and that's why they stick in it for so long. To a point, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's similar to like there's a thin line between love and hate at the end of the day, um, and I think video games are the same way. Like it's at what point does your enjoyment and appreciation of a game and your love where really where's that line between it being a toxic addiction you know it's it's very thin and i think it's all how you continue to handle it like it can be healthy right now it can be a healthy game but if you're not careful in nurturing that frustration and your own mentality in handling it it can easily become that toxic addiction it it, it and it's not something that stays one way or the other. You constantly have to be managing that relationship because when you play a game and you're part of a community, it is a relationship. And a lot of it is going to be what you make it, right? We see that all the time. If, if you, you, you'll constantly be on Twitter, Reddit. If you go there, DVD, Twitter, Reddit, forewarning, please be careful. It's, it's a wild <laughs> place. Um, may, may don't go there. I actually don't go there. We don't have that yeah. luxury anymore, but you know, we're yeah, safe we're, for we're another way here. Realm, and I think I prefer it here over Reddit. Um, it's I miss Reddit it, stories though. Reddit stories were good. We maybe we'll cover those in another one. Um, they uh, man, I just blanked my little train of thought there. But yeah, it's it, it's a relationship, and if you you you'll constantly see people that say that the space is very toxic and everybody's rude are often offenders of that themselves, right? Um, there's a lot of positivity here, but it really is what you make of it. If you want to dig into the negativity, you're just going to cultivate more and engage with it more. But if you're saying GG and you're having a good time you're, and you go into the end game chat and you're like, dude, that was a crazy flashlight save. I guarantee you, you're going to get a lot more positivity out of it. Um, and the same with any relationship. It, at the end of the day, it's just a relationship and you need to manage it and keep stock of where it's at all the time. And I think that's just hard for people to realize. They think it's a game and th it's not any deeper than that when it kind of is. It's it's more you're, you're, you're actively spending a large portion of your time interacting with a large number of people. We do have to cut to break here in a second, but I do want to bring something funny about that specifically. Um, so we recently had a situation um, where <laughs> there was someone um, who came into uh, my stream back before we did the whole, uh, you know, talk show late night by daylight situation. Um, and they were very, very upset. Um, and uh, I was very calm. They apparently took issue with something I said in a YouTube video. Um, and first they said, well, you're biased, so your opinion doesn't count, which I was like, oh, well, that's kind of silly. And then they called me delusional and told me that they were going to block me, <laughs> which was uh, a response of all time. Um, but I went into like to, to check out who this person was. It was just like being so like nasty to me. Um, streamer and also has in their, their Steam info, you know, we you know everybody is deserving of love and people are people and all this like really like actually wholesome great stuff but they were out here treating me like that like you're right there's absolutely a disconnect with a lot of the people that like you know vocalize that kindness and care often because of just the getting in the weeds of dead by daylight turn and do the exact same things that they you know hate in the community they do that to other people yeah yeah no it's it's it's, it's that uh, that meme that's been around since the 2010s right you either uh you play long enough uh and and give up a, a good legacy or you stay long enough and become the villain that you fought against you know and i i guarantee you that that person they put that in their uh stream description uh and they probably meant it at the time i mean i just think people like that they just haven't monitored that that relationship and it's grown sour and it's unfortunate 
Well, we do have to cut the break here. We need a word from our sponsor, so do not go anywhere. Do not change the channel. Well, we will be right back because we can't go anywhere. Today's Late Night by Daylight sponsor is Larry's Memorial Institute, the premier option in electrical therapy. Lead Dr. Herman Carter is very accommodating with his services. <laughs> so if you, for whatever weird reason, need shock therapy, please choose Larry's Memorial Institute. You can use code LATE NIGHT to get 69% off your shock therapy. Nice. And we're back. So we've been talking, uh, if you, you know, just got here from the commercial break. Uh, we've been talking about hitting a wall where you get burnt out and frustrated with Dead by Daylight because Levi here, our excellent guest for today, has worked through a recent hump, a recent burnout that they had in a very, very healthy and positive way, which is, I think, something that we can all stand to learn from. And hopefully we can dispense some good lessons that perhaps you can take into your own burnouts and frustrations with Dead by Daylight. So I on that topic, wanted to ask you as we get into our second part here, what do you think would be good advice that's a little bit more general? Because a lot of your situation has some specifics to it, but what would be some good general advice for somebody in a burnout? Because there's a lot of things that can lead to a burnout. What is What do you think is a healthy way to go about addressing that and fixing that situation? Analyze what you find fun. If just literally sit down, and think about what you find fun about the game. If it's the end of the match and it's only when you win, you're probably finding fun in victory and not the game itself. Um, and that maybe you should reanalyze if that's how you want to look at the game and reframe it. Um, if, if it's the game and you like doing a certain thing, um, try aiming and trying to consider wins as like, ah, I really want to get like these trick hits on Xeno or Deathslinger. Or if you're a survivor, I wanna I wanna get good at like CJ text or uh, FOV text, something or flashlight saves, um, and refocus what a win condition is. To you. Uh, you'll have a lot more enjoyment. And it gives you something to look forward and focus on. If you just are wanting to play to get good in general or just win in general, it's such an amalgamous ask that it, it's hard to track. It's hard to really aim for. But just little steps here and there of improvement, I think, will go a long way in like kind of feeding your your spirit. Um, I call it the fighting spirit. It's a little silly. People probably make fun of me for it, but it, it's there. You got to feed it. You got to get some victories here and there. You got to improve. Um, and if you keep improving and you see that improvement, it'll it'll kind of carry you. And I think it'll give you a better positivity in the rough moments and the rough games. Do you think there is? Do you think DVD is a game that is a space you can exist if winning is the only thing that matters to you? No, um, I don't think I think of winning is the only thing that matters to you. PVP games are probably not for you. Um, and this is something I learned with even fighting games. I mean, there's people fighting games are even more competitive. That's the whole point. Uh, very cutthroat. Um, and there's people with very high streaks, but they still lose. At some point, you're going to lose um, multiple times. Um, and, and that's that should always be a good thing. You should almost be just as happy about your losses as you are your victory. Not all the time, but in your loss, there's something you did wrong. Almost always. There's very rarely a game that was completely 1000% out of your control. There's always at least one or two things at the very least that you could have done differently to improve. And during every loss, that's what you should be looking at being like, okay, maybe I committed too much here or I didn't pressure enough here. Uh, and you jot that down and it's a learning experience and it might be a small step forward, but it's a step forward. Um, but if you're just there for wins, there's there is no step forward. It's just defeat, and then I think that's what really crushes people. I do I do think that um, from the perspective of a lot of people that are still learning and getting used to the game, that a lot of the situations that they end up in where they're facing really good perks or really good survivors, it may appear if they're already in that situation that okay, well, there's nothing I could do. I could definitely name a couple of games in like the last like three months where realistically i just did not have the right build to face their builds or we just got a really bad map and i did not play the right character to play on that map um but though that's like a couple in like the past three months i think that we have the perspective as people with like thousands of hours to go okay there was truly nothing i could have done about that that was the game balance or that was the map balance that was something right i 
I think where a lot of players run into frustration is like until you get better, until you have a lot of experience with the game, a lot more situations seem like that where, oh, there was truly nothing I could do. So how do you pace yourself and avoid that pitfall of, okay, well, there's truly nothing I could do. How do you mark, okay, how do you identify what I could have done better in that situation, even if you're not somebody with thousands of hours? Um, I kind of approach it the same way I do art. Um, and there's there's something I often share with a lot of other artists that are just starting out, right? Because a lot of tonight we've been talking kind of from a experienced and veteran point of view. Um, but from a beginner point of view, I think there's a certain point where you just have to accept that this game, along with a lot of games and a lot of things in life, are knowledge and experience based. Not so much technical ability, even though that is a part of it. And at the beginning of almost anything, you have to be okay with defeat or failure. And that's okay. A lot of people shy away from failure and that's why they don't really progress in things like art, gaming, really anything in life. And in art, I always say, you have a pen in your life and all the good drawings are at the back end of that pen, but there's a lot of trash art at the front. And the faster yeah. you get through all the failures and the bad art, the sooner you get to the good art. But you have to get through that bad art. And Dead by Daylight's the same way. If you're playing, you are going to lose a lot. And that's totally okay. Enjoy it being a horror game at the start. That it, it very quickly will stop being a horror game. So enjoy that part. It's a whole different era of DVD for you at the very beginning. And that's totally okay. And be okay with defeat. It, have fun. This is your time to like experiment, fun, figure out what you like. And don't shy away from the losses, the failure. Lean into it. Fail faster, as fast as you can. The more you fail, the faster you're going to learn and the faster you're going to get to those good games. I promise. And, and it, you can multiply your learning by watching other people talking, get involved in the community, talk to your friends, get them involved. Like the more experiences you share of failure with you and everybody else and you just absorb, the faster you'll grow and get there. And that's just part of the experience. You just have to be okay with losing. We've all been there. I, I guarantee Bran, I know myself when I started, I lost all the time. I've recently started trying to play Survivor somewhat competently not just like as a, like a silly little party game where I really don't care about the survivor side of the game. And oh my gosh, I have been losing like crazy. But I'm actually starting to get somewhere. Um, I'm, I'm starting to improve and actually understand the game on that side to a reasonable level. But it, I, I still have a lot of bad games ahead of me and I know that and I, it's just part of the ride, part of the process. Um, and it's the same way with most things in life and that's okay. I just want to fail faster. I think one thing that helped me get through college is actually really helpful is trying to uh, integrate active thinking so whether it be uh, something as simple as like I'm chewing gum while I'm in class like I'm actively doing something at the same time that I am like trying to take in this information or, or understand something that's challenging going as far as obviously like taking notes um, with streaming it's fairly easy because you're just like talking aloud most of the time so if you're not one of the streamers that locks in, you're like, okay, I'm going to chase this Meg. Okay, I'm going to go pressure this Jen. I'm going to go to this side of the map to look for somebody. Because I feel like a lot of people just kind of get like lost in the shuffle and just kind of autopilot. But if you're like active thinking why you're doing those things, it's easier to recall, hmm, maybe that decision was bad because I, I actively was thinking during that decision so I can analyze whether it was a good or bad one. Yeah. Um... Agreed. Uh, even I think one of the best things you can do too is you, if you're dealing with just your perspective, it's kind of difficult. We were, you're very lucky. Like I'm speaking as a streamer, um, but it, even before I streamed, I always, always tried to watch games I played against other streamers from their perspective because you learn so much more when you see something from the outside. I mean, I think we've all heard ourselves on like a recording or a video of us. And you realize how much different you sound or how much different you look from that third perspective. And sometimes playing a game is the same way. And that can be a huge learning thing too. being like, oh, I didn't even know I was, I was doing these things. Um, and that kind of goes hand in hand with that, too. I think that'd help out a lot. Yeah, this has been very, very nice. And I feel like it's going to be constructive, um, if not just for the ability to relate to being in that burnout situation. And it's it's never nice to be there. I feel like a lot of the day by day like community uh, like reacts very like aggressively towards people who are experiencing burnout, but nobody likes to be burnout. Nobody likes to feel that way. So hopefully some of the things that we have talked about today 
can be taken constructively and actually serve to help push people in a more positive direction. Um, is there anything that you would like to put forward as something that you're thankful for in terms of your Dead by Daylight experience, like the game community, anything, anything regarding this situation? Um, yeah, um, I am, I'm a big introvert. Um, I've, I've always had a hard time, uh, making bonds and friends with people. Um, but this game has kind of alleviated that. I mean, I have Fran here. I've, like I said, I, I just talked about a, a problem I've had for two or three months and I had legitimate friends working through it and life stuff with me because of Dead by Daylight. I've met incredible people and it's not just me. I, I, I know people that have gone to each other's weddings, gotten married, moved in with each other all because of Dead by Daylight. And I think it's kind of a pretty thing. I know maybe it's, it sounds sensate, a lot like sensationalism, but it's true. I, I the, the the bonds I've made and the friends I made, are, it, it's amazing. It's it's just cool. It's something I would have never expected from silly little horror game. And I think that's cool. Um, and there, there's good relationships to still be found. Uh, you just got to be open to them. Awesome. That was great. So, let's remind the people at home where can we find you again? Yeah, you can find me mostly on Twitch um, at ghost underscore anom- anonymous underscore. Um, or you can find me on YouTube with the same handle, ghost underscore anonymous underscore, um, or on Twitter if you dare venture into that void. Um, those are pretty much the three main sp- spaces you can find me. Or I'm here in the entity now because, uh, please, I don't even know if I can still stream from here, really. I don't, I don't, we don't get Wi Fi. <laughs> Shit. I mean, the people that come in get Wi Fi. We don't get Wi Fi. Of course. Of course, they would do that. I mean, if we could get Wi Fi, we can't can't make money so like how would we pay for it huh that's a, i never thought about that there, there ain't no entity coins are there no they're called oryx cells come on pay attention oh yeah the oryx cells cost money though it's a it's it's a it's a never-ending problem chicken and the egg chicken and the egg chicken and the <laughs> egg <laughs> <laughs> well this is usually the part where i would dismiss you but like you know no guess so yeah, i guess you can just stay there um I got I, somewhat of a desk. I mean, it, it's kind of kind of like unfair because like I get all the snacks over here. So like, if you're hungry or thirsty, you kind of have to come through me. Yeah, hey, it's it's good. I have t- terrible impulse control. If I were at that counter, there would be no snacks. It would it would be a void counter, not a snack counter. So we're we're good. I promise. Yeah, I, I mean, I meant I don't think that'll be too much of a problem because this doesn't really look like the most like. Yeah, FDA safe thing to eat in the world. Yeah, I don't. If if we don't have money, I don't know where they're getting ingredients. Uh, I'll be honest. Uh, and based on the clown's diet, I'm not sure I want to find out. Looks like we're reaching the end of our first episode here. I guess it's about time to check in with the entity to see how we performed today. So that's how we see what we did with the entity today. No, oh, well, I mean, I thought we did fine, but uh, we did forget a guess. So. Yeah, I mean, we, we, I mean, technically we, 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 we succeeded like two thirds, right? That's like 66%. That's just s- s- slightly above failing score. You could say every night we succeed at failing. <laughs> there we go. Uh, it'd be funnier if it weren't so true. Yeah. Well, I suppose we'll just have to do better in the next one. Well, thank you so much for coming out tonight, everyone. Your love and support means a lot. You could even say that our lives depend on it. Because it does. They do. I would like not to upset the entity again, please. Well, is there anything else, Levi, now that we're thinking about our perilous doom? Uh, no, no, no. Just, uh, just remember, uh, before the entity comes crashing down on us for, uh, failing here tonight, um, remember there's another person on the other side of that screen before you get angry in the in-game chat. It's just a game. Leave the game in the game. There's a beautiful person on the other side of that screen. That's all I really got. All right. Okay. Good night, everyone. Night, everyone. Bye.